Anunnaki history on planet Nibiru. Anshar was the fifth king to rule on Nibiru. He became king when his mother, Inshargan, the queen, demanded that there be a succession law supreme to all other succession laws called the law of the seed, where if a half-sister married a half-brother, that child would rule supreme over all other children, even if they were not the firstborn. This is the story of her son, Anshar. When the laws changed, there was a lot of fighting between all of the princes of Nibiru. There were several. There were a lot of words, but no one took it to the next level of a rebellion. Anshar, as his wife, chose his half-sister, and he gave her the name Kishar. So because of this law, the dynasty kept on going. Unfortunately, during Anshar's rule, the crops kept getting smaller and smaller, creating problems on the planet. Now, this feudal system that they have with the king, he also provided food for all of the people. No one had to pay for their food. No one had to pay for anything. Everything was provided. So the fields got smaller with fewer fruits and grains. The tablet says, from one circuit to the next, the heat got more muscular as they got closer to the sun. Remember, Nibiru does this elliptical orbit around the sun of 3,600 years. Also, it states that the coolness in the faraway home got more biting. The faraway home is when Nibiru is farthest away from the sun in our solar system. In our card, the city of the throne, the king and many wise people gathered together. Now, what I like about Nibiru is that the council of the wise and the counselors, the advisors of the king, they are all genius people, like they are super scientists. You don't have military men ruling. You don't have an industrial complex that is influencing it. These would be to us as like Nobel Prize winners, super scientists, people people that actually do good and are really wise, the geniuses of our time, should be the ones counseling our governments. Yet here, we don't do that. You get any pingo palino, you just stick them up there. Food for thought. People running the planet should be the smartest ones on the planet, just like Nibiru did. The people with a lot of knowledge were told to ask questions. They looked at the lands and soil and did experiments and tested everything. Then they tried out the rivers and the streams, doing testing on the waters. This situation had happened before. It wasn't the first time. And a lot of people from the past had said that Nibiru had grown. They said that based on when it was colder or warmer, that's when the crops would grow more or less. They call this a fate meaning that because it's part of the circuit of Nibiru, even the crops, vegetations, have a fate. The tablet goes on to say, others that knew the edge did not think that this was Nibiru's destiny. They thought that the motive was something else. It was not Nibiru's destiny to blame. They found that there had been a breaching in the air of the atmosphere of Nibiru. It had something to do with the spitting up of volcanoes, Nibiru is a volcanic planet. It's a radiant self-heating planet also. The heat comes from the center because of the volcanic activity. So the volcanoes were spitting up less. Therefore, the air on Nibiru became less dense. And they concluded that the protective shield of the planet had shrunk. At this point, pestilence had spread during the rule of Anshar and Kishar. And no amount of work could stop it. 